Okay, so we're adding positive and negative numbers. One strategy that I like is to use a number line. So if I set my number line up here, I can quickly use that to think about each of these problems. Sometimes you get caught up setting up a number line has all these details in it, and I think that a, a number line can be a very useful tool if we keep it simple. So in the first problem, we have 12, positive 12 plus negative 4. And the way I keep it simple is by just starting and writing out the first number I'm given, and nothing else. So I start here, and then I add negative 4. So when I add a negative value, I go to the left, and I'm going to go that way four times. One, two, three, and four. I ran out of room. So there I'm adding negative four, right? We'll put it in parentheses so we can see that we're adding negative four. And we go to the left. That's going to bring us to 11, 10, 9, 8. So our first question equals eight. Now the next problem, we can use a number line as well. It's a little bit tougher here. Um, so I think, actually, we'll hold, we'll hold off on this one. I think I'm, I don't think I'm going to use a number line on this one, although I certainly could. Uh, I think there's a better way to do it. The next problem, I ain't going to use a number line. So whole numbers, I guess, I should, I should say, that's when I really like to use my number line, when I have um, a group of whole numbers. And the number line helps me keep it simple when I'm dealing with whole numbers. So here I'm at negative uh, 6,200 and I'm adding a positive 1200 so I'm going to go to the right so I'm going to break down 1200 into a thousand and two hundred just to think about it make this problem a little, a little bit more clear for me first if I add a thousand to this number that'll take me all the way up right to negative 5200 and then if I add another 200 what does that bring me to? that brings me to negative 5000 so this, this question I'm going to leave as negative 5,000. Now here, adding negative fractions, see this negative sign uh, attached to the 5? You could put it anywhere you want, really. It wouldn't change the answer. However, uh, for simplicity, think of this negative sign as being attached to the numerator. So it's like negative 5 over 12 plus positive 2 thirds. Let's rewrite that third so it matches this 12 by multiplying 2 and 3 by 4, giving us 8 over 12. So now we have all twelfths. And this problem can be thought of negative 5 plus 8 over 12. You can break it down as if you have this whole number expression over another whole number, which is what fractions are, but that allows us to kind of return to a similar approach that we use with the number line for the other whole number problems. So now we're at negative 5, and we're going to add 8. So we're going to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and I ran off the number line again. So I'm hopping up 8. So the first 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 hops bring us to 0, right? Because we're going from negative 5. So up 5 brings us to 0, and then another 3 brings us to positive 3. So positive 8 plus negative 5, that's 3. So it's 3 over 12 or 1 over 4. Now, I think a simple way of dealing with the decimals is to observe kind of a pattern of what's been happening in all these problems. Uh, so let me make a new page here. So the decimal problem uh, that we're dealing with is 4.5, right? Yep. Plus negative 3.8. So one observation uh, you might start to make as you're, you're working with positive and negative numbers is that... Um, the answers are either going to be positive or negative, and usually it's connected to which number is further from zero. So for example, we just added negative 5 and 8. Notice that the 8 is much further from zero than the negative 5. So the answer was positive. Right? So here, the positive number further from zero meant that the answer is positive. And if you think about the distance on the number line, right? here's zero, let's say it was zero, 8's over here, maybe negative 5 is right here. So to go from 0 to 8, we have to hop a total of 8 units. But here, right, we're only hopping 5 units in a negative direction. So that tells me that 8 is 3 more spaces further from 0 than negative 5. And our answer, you might be starting to notice, was positive 3. And that makes sense. That's telling us that, oh, 
this answer, this sum of these two numbers, when we add them up, has to be positive because the positive number is further from zero. And it's three further from zero than the negative number, so the answer is positive three. If we look at another one, let's say uh, negative six plus four, now I know the answer is going to be negative. And I know that because negative six is further from zero as than, than positive four. Right, if you look at that on a number line, maybe you know here's zero, here's negative six, four might be only over here. So it's it's a distance of six units to get to six, right, in the negative direction, and only four to get to four. So this is two further from zero than this. That's why the answer is negative two. You can imagine when you're adding positive and negative numbers, they're balancing out with each other, almost pulling each other back and forth. And whichever one's further from zero will have more weight in that battle. It'll pull, it'll pull your answer more in that direction. Um, and part of why this is happening, if we think of negative six, right, as one, two, three, four, five, six negative ones, add them all to get negative six, and we think of four positive ones, when we combine these groups, all the positive and negative numbers will cancel out to zero. So whichever number, the positive or negative, has a couple more values left over, that'll be the answer. So we had six negatives and four positives. The two negatives left over is the answer. Now all this discussion allows us to, to quickly solve this problem with the same reasoning. Uh, this answer has to be positive because 4.5 is positive and it's further from zero than negative 3.8. Also, I know it has to be 0.7. And that's my answer. And I know that because if I look at the difference between just positive 4.5 and 3.8, I subtract them, I have to add 0.7 to 3.8 to get 4.5. It tells me 4.5 is this much further from zero, 0.7 further from zero than 3.8. So using the same reasoning here, I'm able to figure out that this answer is 0.7. All right, hope that helps.